This is the Behringer 110 synth voice from the System 100 series. So what's a synth voice and how can we use it? A subtractive synth voice combines the three core elements of a classic subtractive synthesizer, oscillator, filter, typically a low pass one and an amplifier. And most often these are voltage controllable, so we have a VCO, a VCF and a VCA. If we want to patch a synth voice from standalone modules, we will require at least three of them. Here in my example I use a Syntrotech VCO, which goes into the Döpfer SEM filter and then into a Döpfer VCA. And in addition I use a sequencer and some reverb to achieve this simple sequence. In contrast to this decomposed synth voice, we have a synth voice module here, which is from Olitronic, and it requires about half the space of my previous uh, three module example, and no patching. And it even features an envelope, a drive circuit, and a sub oscillator for some powerful analog sounds. This module is more than a minimal synth voice, it's actually a miniature synthesizer and that holds for many other synth voice modules too. What they all have in common is that they save space and patching and this is probably their main contribution. Synth voice modules were already included in the early modular synths like the ARP 2500 and also the System 100M from Roland. The Behringer recreation is close to the original and equally basic since it features only the audio path components, so VCO, VCF and VCA. These are very close to the respective standalone modules, especially regarding the internal circuitry. But they also have some noteworthy differences, so let's go through the three sections of this module. The VCO is your primary sound source in the synth voice and it offers triangle, sawtooth and pulse wave with adjustable pulse width. It has two exponential CV inputs that track one volt per octave with the attenuator in the full clockwise position. Here we have the manual pitch and range selector, like with the standalone VCO from the 112 module, and um, in contrast to this standalone VCO, we have only one output here, which is internally routed to the filter, which is a nice feature and saves us some patching. This VCO here has no separate attenuator for the pulse width, but this knob here is either a manual pulse width control or it becomes an attenuator when you patch something into the CV input here. Probably the most significant difference to the standalone VCO is that there is no oscillator sync here. Then we have the filter, which is the sound shaping component of the synth voice. The low pass filter removes an adjustable portion of the harmonics and overtones in the raw VCO output and can create very different sound characters by doing so.
It has two inputs with attenuator, the left one is internally normal to the VCO output, but you can break this connection by plugging something into here. The filter controls are the same illuminated faders of the standalone module. And here we have the two CV inputs for the filter cutoff. These inputs track 1 volt per octave, so we can use this filter also as a sine wave oscillator with full resonance setting and no inputs. The right CV input is internally connected to one of the VCA CV inputs and again this saves us some patching. A major difference to the 121 filter is the missing high pass here, which is not a big deal. The other difference is that this filter has no standalone output, but is internally connected to the VCA. So we cannot use it independently from the VCA. The VCA itself has two inputs and the left one is the one that comes from the filter. And we can also break this connection by plugging something into here. Like the standalone from the 130 module, this one here is AC coupled, so it's not suited for processing slowly changing CV signals. Then we have the high and low outputs, where high is the normal output and low is about 20 decibel quieter. These green and red LEDs here indicate if a signal is present and if the VCA saturates respectively. Down here we have the initial gain control and finally the two CV inputs where the left one is um, the one that is uh, connected internally to the filter CV input. And again we can break this connection by plugging an external signal into here. The only major difference to the standalone VCA is the missing switch for linear and exponential response, so this one here is always linear which seems a bit strange since exponential fits better to audio applications. However, it seems to me that the original from Roland was also linear, judged by the original circuit diagrams, but maybe I'm wrong here. But the Behringer one is definitely linear. And that's it, that's the 110 synth voice. The overall quality is quite solid, like with the other modules from the System 100, and the operation is flawless, and due to the built-in mixers and the normal internal routing, patching is very fluent. It sounds great on its own and I used it in quite some videos now with the rest of the System 100 modules. I placed a few links in the description. This module seems to be a good starting point for the System 100, perhaps in combination with the dual envelope and the sequencer, as this gives you a pretty solid modular monosynth. I placed another link in the description to a video from Tim Shubridge, who comes to a similar conclusion about this 110 module to be a good starting point to get into modular. What I really like is to mix a second VCO into the filter and some CV sequencing of the synth voice, so a very simple patch, but this very simple patch already gives a very massive analog synth sound.
Thank you.